Okay, this is for my own notification. So right behind the filter is the one that's pounded through. And then you have two here. And you have one there. They all have like an oblong. Okay, where's this one? Yeah, there's a small oblong, big oblong. I'm gonna make sure that this matches. So we got one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there should be seven. So there's one, two, three, almost pounded through. I'm gonna fix that. Four above it to the right. Five, six, seven. Okay. There's another check ball. Right here, it's underneath. So I looked for some more spots like that. I really didn't see them. This one here, because it's got two holes, I gotta figure out which one is which. But on this one, the check ball was on the other side. So when you pull this off, it sits right there. Okay. This is for my own edification. Yeah, it's a hard angle. Okay, but on the valve body side, that's where that anti-clunk ring goes. Let's see. So you can see, okay, the snap ring stops there. The curved part of the clunk ring goes there. Okay, and like I said, this is the bottom to the left or top of your screen. So that's how that anti-clunk goes in there before that snap ring. So I'll probably need to remember that. Okay. I actually don't have the snap ring pliers I need. But uh, using this board, and then I wedge it up against this countertop with a jack. This little blue jack right there. And that allows me to press down on it. Unfortunately, I don't have a pair of snap ring pliers that will get at that angle because it's a pretty, it's a pretty steep 45, and it's got to be pretty short. So, as far as the rest of it, these clutches here on this thing don't look too bad. But these are dark, and then these are dark. So, anyway, I don't want to. Since I'm not a uh, aficionado here, <laughs> I don't want to get these two mixed up because I have it laid out kind of the way I understand. So, uh, I mean, it's doable. So, uh, a friend of mine lent me this thing. That makes it a lot easier. So, anyway, it presses down to get that snap ring out. I just stopped because my son wanted to watch some TV. But, uh, this rod right here goes, and you press here, the rod goes up and down. And I actually tried that first before I made my little wood block. Because they sell a, you know, a special tool. Of course, you know, it's like 70 bucks. And uh, I'm doing this the one time, so I, mean, I may do it again. But I don't really plan to do this over and over again, you know. But so this is mine. So anyway, so I don't know. This record will only be available if I'm successful. So let me just say that at first. So anyway, David uh, lent me this uh, transmission tool. Very helpful. I do a little rearranging to make it work for that. The uh, reverse low piston that thing right there. That was quite fun getting that out. But now that it's out, got my kit. New pistons, new filter, and uh, all these little bags in here, which I assume are going to go in the order of the stack. So, anyway, do a little cleaning and uh, start stacking. Here's see the Allen wrench, the two fork pieces off the uh, this thing. It sits on the shaft. This little pivot pin. We'll be using it for some other other stuff, but I set it up in there 
to do that and I just got it so I'm done with that. This isn't in the video videos that I've been watching but there's a port let me find it real quick okay there it is so what I'm doing is I'm filling it with air so you fill it you let off your trigger just wait a second and let off your pressure so it's definitely holding I got the rings right <laughs> November 18th 2017 We've lost power, but I thought I'd show you this. I just replaced this. I took this apart like they say I should. Got all these little valves out. So I'll be putting those back in a minute, but the thing I wanted to tell you was uh, pulling all this apart. I mean, everything in here was just perfect. It really was. You know, I mean, this car has 200,000 miles on it, so. And it doesn't really show in other videos, but there's a metal ring that sits under this and that's what keeps these pushed out okay so basically as this thing moves this way or that way the veins move inside this hole but they never there's no spring there okay so you're just moving these two circles away from each other so that metal ring on the inside it's not something you replace it's not in a kit there's no seal or anything else underneath this it's simply that teflon seal and o-ring and you pull this to get enough space, of course, pull the spring out to get enough space to put those items in. And that should be the only item that I can see that might wear. And of course, on mine, there's the old ones. They were, of course, nearly perfect. Over my last video, I actually could have showed you the ring. There's one on each side. So, anyway. I was just saying the little veins, you know, when you put them out, you got to push them in kind of where they sit on top of that. Basically, you want to find the sweet spot. You don't want to force anything. But there's a ring just like that on each side. See, that spins in there. There's another one on the other side. That orange thing, okay, is basically that's part of this uh, shell thing. So it's not in the kit. So anyway, bye. I went back in there. Because I'm worried about some kind of seal in here and like I said that's the bushing okay that's assembly lube there's a metal it is no doubt metal seal ring built into mine now mine's a 2002 GMC Envoy I mean I don't know if that makes a difference but this is not in my kit I can't replace it it's metal we're gonna go back with it Okay, so that goes there. And see, this plastic thing is actually, it just comes out. See here. It's just like a, to keep it standing up kind of thing. So, also not in the kit. And, you know, a little bit of pattern right there, it just tells you which way you need to put it back in. I mean, it's, you can see it rubs on that inside edge, but as far as there being a line or something there, you know. So, anyway. I'm gonna put it back together again. I just want to reiterate there is nothing on this year model. I mean, I can't speak to all your models and I'm not a transmission rebuilder, but do with as you like. Okay, pump is done. She said I have another pump and I need to uh, abbreviate or abridge something I said just in the last video. Underneath that metal seal ring is an O-ring. And that's what puts pressure on the metal seal ring. So you do need to change it. And like I said, at that point, man, it was like the third time I've taken this thing apart. So I just didn't feel like doing it. Okay. So, I mean, I put the O-ring in there, but I didn't feel like making another video showing you the O-ring. Just trust me. It's there. So when you get that piece out, that metal ring I showed you in the last video, underneath it is an O-ring. And really, the O-ring is perfect. Just like almost everything I'm pulling out of here as far as O-rings go. But uh, that's part you're supposed to change but anyway i did take it pretty cool and i put it on the torque converter and you know i spun it you know where the torque converter is going clockwise so that you could actually hear it sucking on the suck side and i actually put my finger in and i was spinning it around on the pinch and it, it actually sucked my finger a little bit so i'm, I'm uh, confident that the pump is working and working well so off to the races First, I got all my guts in there. We got it pre-lubed. Got my gasket. 
you know, if you got this right, this sits, this is another video, but this sits lower than this. And it's really, it's kind of tricky to get it all rocked down in there, but I finally got it all seated. So I'm confident it is all the way where it needs to be. So got the band installed, the accumulator, or I, I forget what they call it, second gear accumulator, but you know, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, you know, and it pushes on that end of the band. The anchor is this little thing here. And you got to line it up on the inside with that. So, anyway, those holes are all the passages for the fluid from the pump. So, uh, we're nearly there. Put that on. Put that O-ring on. And then I'll be putting the valve body on. That'll be the next video. So. Alrighty, there she blows. All assembled. Zip ties on broken connectors. And then I wedged the old filter screen right up under that so it holds this connector out because the lock ties on the other side are kind of so so. <laughs> so. But it's wedged under good, it ain't going nowhere. There she is. She's clean on the inside. The outside doesn't matter. If everyone will get dirty putting it back in the truck. Might as well get this while we're here. Toledo. I think that's in Ohio. But anyway, it's been fun. And uh, hopefully, we have a video of me driving this thing around. All right, I test drove yesterday. And I actually used the scanner to look at the trans adaptives, which is how much air, they call it an air for the shifts. And uh, everything is five by five. So uh, I'm on my way to work this morning. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and color this one as success. We are successful. So you're seeing it shift there. Get it, you know, I've already taken it everywhere I need to go. So uh, no problems, fluid looks good and uh, we're good to go. Talk to you later. Just a little bit more video for you. Going down the toilet.